Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the Whole Cake Island arc is officially over. Ah, that's the good shit right there. That's the taste of completion. The legends were true. The Whole Cake Island arc was actually going to have a definitive ending. We have been stuck in the climax of this arc for months. And finally, it's over. And there are some pretty big developments in these couple of chapters right here. So let me talk about some of my favorite moments. First off, I'm going to be reviewing two chapters. This is 901 and 902. The main reason for that is because I've been busy as hell. So I'm just going to combine both of these together. And actually, it does kind of work out. We get to see that the Straw Hat Pirates actually managed to survive getting blasted to all hell. Thanks to Wadatsumi, the giant freaking fish man who grabbed them, swallowed him, and replaced it with another ship that got destroyed, and he was able to swim off before he started to get attacked by Oven. He spit them out, they shot up into the sky, and made their grand escape, but not before being met by a massive fleet of enemies. That's when Jinbei decides that he is going to stay behind and fight, and this scene has me worried. Will Jinbei die? Will Jinbei live? Why would they kill this character off as soon as he officially joins the Straw Hat crew? I really hope this is not what happens to Jinbei. I want him to survive, and it's hard to say the way uh, 902 actually does end. But basically, uh, Jerma stays behind and fights, and it's just this big massive war while the Straw Hats manage to escape. Picking up again in 902, we get to see that they do actually make their escape, but a lot of people are stuck behind on Cacao Island, where Big Mom is, and she demands life or death. What's going to happen? Who's going to survive? It's all just a giant mystery. And in sandwiched in between all of this is actually some backstory for Katakuri and Brule of all people. We get to see that Brule has had a very close relationship with her brother, always looking out for his best interests and trying to make sure that he never got teased as a child, although that's basically what always happened to him. Everybody compares him to a massive gulper eel because he looks scary as shit. But basically, Brulee just reassures him that even with all this, he can still move on, blah, 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 blah. We're brother, sister, we love each other. But uh, the, the dynamic with Luffy being a part of their lives that was interesting is Brulee absolutely hates Luffy and wants to kill him. But you can see Katakori gained a lot of respect for Luffy in the epic battle that he had with him. He was able to sort of confront himself, so to speak. So, yeah. There it is. That's basically that. But really, the best thing about this is that it is over. It's finally over! Oh, there's some other details, but we'll talk about them in the rundown on these chapters of One Piece. And yes, you're probably wondering why I'm going a little fast today. I'm kind of behind. I got a lot of other things, uh, so I wanted to get through this as quick as I could, but I still wanted to give my thoughts about this chapter. Um, 902 to me was definitely, uh, I think, the one I liked more. 901 was interesting as I spent an entire week just like wondering how the heck are they going to escape this? Were they really just destroyed? But Wadatsume was able to swallow the ship, which I think was interesting because I didn't realize he was big enough to actually do that. But then again, we've seen him huge in the past. But it seems like his actual like size fluctuates quite a bit. But uh, 902 is where things really got interesting because not only did we have them finally escaping, but we also had some really great scenes with the characters. We finally got to figure out what actually happened during that big close moment between Pudding and Sanji. And she actually removed some of his memories, which I think was a pretty big deal. We also have a wonderful scene with uh, Sanji and carrot with her sort of uh, reeling over the death of Pedro. Uh, Sanji finds out all about Pedro. He sacrificed his life. And Carrot is saying, don't worry about that. He, he just thank him for what he did. But she starts to break down and cry. And it's such a tender moment between these two characters. And it really makes me still want to see Carrot as a member of the Straw Hat Pirates, if only for how she gels so well with everyone else in the actual series. Uh, the, the final shot is of uh, Sanji getting back to doing what he does best, which is cooking. This is all uh, intercut with another scene of uh, his master Zeph, who is doing the same exact thing. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. It's pretty solid stuff this week, but really, I'm just... 
I got this feeling of just like, thank God it's over. It's finally done. We can move on to something new for once. This entire freaking climax has been insane. It's had its ups. It's had its downs. For the most part, I have enjoyed it, and I loved Luffy's battle with Katakuri, but I'm just ready to get out of here and see some brand new stuff. Uh, Big Mom was still just as menacing uh, at the very end of this chapter, though. It's amazing that uh, they didn't actually defeat her, and uh, they basically just established yet again that these emperors are incredibly powerful. They're insurmountable walls, and even after everything that's gone down, eating the delicious cake, Big Mom still demands bodies. She needs souls, man, and that's what she asks for at the very end of this chapter, and man, I just don't know what's going to happen. I just really hope that Jinbei is actually going to be able to meet up with Luffy and his friends yet again, but really, at the moment, we're just going to have to wait and see what's up. Plus, 902 was awesome because there were some cool color pages in this one. I loved the really weird, thinly veiled reference to Ghostbusters. It's just a random uh, giant spread of all the characters in color. Some of them are transformed into gingerbread cookies like Zoro and Nico Robin and Nami. And then you have characters like uh, Usopp and uh, Luffy who have like proton packs on their back. And they're fighting against a group of like candy and sweet monsters. And it's just weird in the best way possible. There's also uh, the cover page uh, from the, uh, the magazine where we get to see... Luffy actually wearing uh, Deku's costume from My Hero Academia, which is pretty awesome. I really love the look of that, but what's the deal with Asta here? Like, seriously, Asta wearing Luffy's outfit? Asta, go to hell! Get the, get the hell out of here! Sorry, I'm, I'm just not really a big fan of Black Clover. Uh, what I am a big fan of is One Piece, and these two chapters right here were really solid and entertaining, but really, the, the biggest sense I get from them is just relief. is done. I'm giving both of these a four out of five. That's my thoughts on this chapter. I'd love to get yours. Tell me in the comments section below and what you hope to see from the next big arc in the One Piece series. Will Jinbei survive? Will the other characters survive against Big Mom? What's going to happen? Let's just start a discussion, guys. I'll see you next time, and as always, stay damn there, baby!